Hi, Socrates here for the 21 Report. Today, I am in stepping into some very enormous shoes. Uh, it's making me a little uncomfortable. I have a high degree of stress and anxiety, which is not normally the situation here today. And unfortunately, I'm having to interview the very man whose shoes I'm attempting to feel, Mr. George Bruno, the ah. Sultan of Silver himself. Thank you for being on Absolutely. your show. Sure. Thank you for being on your <laughs> show. I like that. I like that. That's good. So we, we are in Warsaw, Poland. Yes. Uh, we've been here for a better part of a week. Yes. Uh, the convention is just roaring. Yes. What has been your experience in coming, seeing, uh, engaging, and uh, just tell us a little bit about your perceptions of, of the event, Warsaw, and your experiences here. Well. I'm just, I'm thinking of like my five senses right away. Uh, what I saw at the airport when I, now I'm, I'm from Philly, which is notably one of the worst airports <laughs> in the United States. And it just always seems like it's filled with chaos. I, re, I came out of a plane into the terminal and it was quiet and there was Chopin music playing in the airport. And I'm like, wow, this is peaceful. Yes, and, and most people don't know Peaceful. Chopin's a native son, too, yes. which, which is an introduction to the community and culture. And then when I went down to baggage claim, there was more of a concerto playing, and it wasn't just chaos. Right. It was, it was peaceful. I'm not used to that. I thought yeah. it was a simulation. Right, yeah. I, yeah. I, for some reason, I, I just kept looking around and just waiting for a director to go, cut, you know, because it was just too peaceful. It was almost as if it was orchestrated, where mm -hmm. I'm just so used to chaos at airports and, you know, in the U.S. And then uh, I ended up, by mistake, taking a bus here to the hotel and not the train. And the bus makes 25 stops on the way here, but I'm kind of glad I did because I got a chance to see people at the bus stops, people getting on and off. Right. And, uh, and it dropped me off right at the front door. So that was kind of a nice experience and a little bit of a sightseeing kind of thing. So it wasn't a matter of get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. Uh, buses take the long way and the leisurely way. And I saw much more than I thought I was going to. And then the uh, staff here, obviously it's a five-star hotel, so you expect there to be just great customer service. But it was like above and beyond, above and beyond, to the point where you're too nice. like. Like, what's going on here? Right, yeah, there's, there's a difference between service and gracious. Yes. And this, the, the service here is gracious. Service. It is gracious. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, the gal at the desk had me in one room, and she, she says, how long will you be here? And I said, till uh, next Wednesday. And she says, oh, I want to make sure you get a, a room that has a really good view. So she searched, and she gave me this magnificent room uh, on a corner and the panorama is beautiful there's so much like it's beautiful lit up at night uh, the natural light is magnificent so I was off to a good start right mm -hmm. from day one right from day one and then uh, settling in having a little bit of jet lag shower nap and then seeing people come in, watching the other half of the world attend this conference versus just the United States version where guys are coming from the different states and so forth, mm -hmm. uh, listening to the countries that they're from and the level of anticipation, uh, like everyone has great haircuts. Yes. They all have, they have like, very hip haircuts uh, and facial hair and uh, a spring in their step. And I thought, this is, this is interesting. I just, I, had, I didn't know what to expect. I did not know what to expect. And I know we've been raising the bar as far as, um, you know, many times conventions like this are jeans and t-shirt kind of thing. And I've noticed over the years the level of just the appearance of people has been elevated. So people are coming to these things 
looking good. Right. Yeah. It's a form of culturalization. Yes. For example, they see it, they know it. Uh, it was interesting. Two young men, I believe, I went out and got suit jackets. Yes. Uh, sports jackets. Yes. And just to sit down and say, we're going to try it, we're going to do it. Yes. They were intrigued by it, did it, and they were just absolutely sporting it. Yes. So it's yeah, and that it. and that's that's influence, you know. Yes. And so it's it's really kind of cool to see that as well. Yeah. So t tell us more about some of the, the your involvement, some of the actual attendees, and, and kind of that engagement. I know there's been a lot of that. Yeah. Well, a lot of hallway talks, um, a lot of talking with people during meals and so forth, a lot of uh, like little sidebars for like image consulting, what I would call like executive presence coaching mm -hmm. with people. Like, what do you think of my haircut? What could I do different? Do you, you know, literally like. You know, do you like what I'm wearing? Would this, would this, like a young man said, do you think this would work on a date? Fantastic. I like those kind of questions. Right. That's, you know, people don't normally ask things like that, but the fact that they feel free to do that here, right, um, is quite amazing, quite amazing. And because who, who teaches that? No, yep, it's not that's like right. most dads sit around and say, son, this is what you will wear on a date mm -hmm. or when you meet a woman, that type of thing. Or so. you would have that. And so I think in a lot of cases this is being missed. Yeah. And it's a real quick chance to touch base with it, to yes. reconfirm, uh, to get reassurance, you know, and, yeah. and I find that occurring more and more. Uh, I know you've been terribly busy doing 21 Report and yeah. so I've been having the opportunity to spend time in the workshops. Yes. And so, you know, from my perspective, I'm seeing an involvement level at the workshops that I'm actually of the opinion at this point that the workshops are absolutely more powerful than the presentations themselves because you now have, you know, essentially street level discussions taking yes. place and going through. And so I wasn't yeah. sure if you were seeing more of that. I know, you know, for example, the other opportunity is with dinners and so forth. Yes. And so last night I was able to see you at our farther end of the, the table and seeing guys literally move from one end of the table to come over to be around your presence to yes. see the yes. literally to see you yes. and to engage in sharing a meal uh, you know last night together and it I know nice. last night was incredible yeah that was a good night that was a good night yeah the workshops um, I believe on the first day you and I we did workshops at no cameras running no photographers and uh, it was uh, no such thing as a stupid question right um, ask whatever you want, comment on whatever you want, do not be afraid to, to inquire about anything. So I did a little teaching and then the Q&A and it was magnificent. It, w it was real personal mm -hmm. and I feel that since we implemented uh, workshops, it's just a, it breaks up the day in the main hall right? because just one speaker after another on stage can be tiring. Mm -hmm. It can. Even even though you get a little break in between, having little breakaway groups with elective workshops, I think was a great choice. And it just packs a lot of learning into a short period of time. Yeah. And and I've I found that it also increases the level of experience. It does. You know, and so that 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 it's and it's in, through another format, and so yeah. I think that also helps. You know, as I understand and and you know learn and, and about teaching what the methodology is. The more ways you can impart the methodology of teaching, yeah. know, the delivery system, the more effective it can be. Yes. Let's let's carry beyond just sort of our experience. Let's talk about some of the, I guess, the tone, demeanor. What's the kind of the breakout ideas coming out of this convention? Each convention seems to have their own identities coming out of it. What are you seeing in particular uh, with this this convention as well as the greater its manosphere itself. Well it was interesting I remember Anthony Johnson saying that the European meeting is going to be uh, focused more on game and intergender relationships and mm -hmm. so forth and I remember that in the in a group chat right and so I started thinking okay because I'm not usually the guy that talks about that mm -hmm. and uh, so I started thinking, how, how can I contribute in that area? Well, I'm an older guy, I, have, you know, I was young once, and I have experience in that, and so I have a perspective that uh, a lot of the younger guys don't have. And one of the pivots that I saw, which I felt at the Patriarch 
conference mm -hmm. back in May was towards uh, family, settling down, you know, whatever that means, however people define that. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't the spinning plates conference, uh, the patriarch, it wasn't that. And it was really glorying on family, mm -hmm. whether it be uh, creating your own family, uh, you know, and I know there's people that have just demonized men uh, dating or marrying someone who already has children. And, you know, for many men who do that, that becomes their family. Right. It's right. a fact. It becomes a family. They are no less of a family than two people meeting and creating children. It's a family unit. And when it's done right, it's a beautiful thing. And I saw that happen at Patriarch. I didn't think that was going to carry over to here. Right. And as I was right. sitting in the, in the main hall watching many of these presentations, any one of them could easily be a Patriarch speech. There was, it was solid. Right. It had eternity in mind. It wasn't just, everything didn't revolve around, you know, what you do with your zipper. Right. The terms like, you know, we talk about, you know, the, the words that are being used, the vocabulary. Yes. You know, legacy, you know, ownership, yes. agency, yes. you know, being of value, contributing, you know, and taking ownership and joy out of it's that It's a new creation. glossary of words, isn't it? It? Abs it absolutely is. And so you can, you know, it's, at least, you know, we're seeing a shift in language use is seeing a shift of value systems. Yes. Because you need new new words for new value structures. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, we're seeing that. Uh, yes. And, and so, you know, it's kind of curious, you know, I know you and I are, you know, of, of you know, you know, a, a stature of in age associated yeah, with yeah. most of these we're young guys. Both over 50. Yeah. Right. And, and they're looking at us and we're having these conversations that I think in many ways, uh, had it been five years ago, this very well could have been absolutely a straight pickup uh, convention. Yeah. 100%. And it, it just absolutely does not have that feel. And even when you have guys that are coming from well-known, established pickup uh, business practices, you know, and they're representing their companies, it still has a differing tone than I, what I think we would have seen five and definitely less than ten years ago. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's not four days of how to get laid. Right. You know, or how to pick or how to approach. Right. You know, it's establishing yourself as a man with your own identity. Excellent. And then bringing that out to yeah. the world and, and communicate it congruently. It's less technique oriented. Right. Yeah. No, uh, you know, step one, step two. It's about step one, step two, working on yourself. Right. And we, you know, in the community, we used to talk about silver bullets. Everybody's looking for the silver bullet to shoot to, to get the girl. Give me yeah. the one line, give me the one line, or yeah. whatever, the technique and whatever it was. And this, you know, across the board, the, the, the content creators are talking about taking agency of your life, becoming a high value individual, yes. first to yourself, then to the people around you in those relationships, and that radiates out. Yes. Finding your purpose and going forward. And it's interesting, if the parallels between two different talks that had two different subject matters were running very parallel to each yes. other. Uh, and that, that was terribly intriguing to see, really, really intriguing to see. So. Yeah, th there's a pivot. Uh, what did you say? New values require new, new words language. or yeah, new language? Yeah, new languages. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah, and that's why we create new words. You know? and, I'm, and I'm not hearing the old glossary a lot right. this weekend. Mm -hmm. I mean, although it's there. Right. Uh, for instance, um, uh, Alexander said something, at, uh, and so did uh, uh, Granin, about it's not red pill, blue pill. It's not... Alpha and beta, it's adult and child. child. Right. And they're starting to look at things between being an adult view and an infantile view. Yes. And I think so much of the community initiated based on trauma, yeah. and you use infantile behavior and language yes. because psychologically you're impotent to a situation. So when you, we talk about hypergamy doesn't care, you're impotent. Okay. And I think as a masculine male, being impotent. Is, is, is an insult, and you're embracing yeah. intimacy. And, and I think there's something terribly unmasculine about that. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a, interesting enough, I'm finding this uh, incredibly harsh in, in uh, Europe where they just don't quite understand that. 
you know, that, that whole track. And they, they, they talk about Red Pill, but they don't quite understand, I guess, the American version or the Western Hemisphere version and fixation on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're, they're looking to skip beyond that. Yes. And, and what I'm also finding very, very distinctly is that they don't have a means and a method to get there right now. And they're mm -hmm. looking for that pathway and that mm -hmm. network and that connection. And they're thriving on the inner dynamics. And I know mm -hmm. your name keeps being brought up again and again. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm finding that terribly fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I think the um, it's a good pivot. It's a very good pivot, and we're not we're not what we're not doing is you know in America they're tearing down monuments of the past. Right. What we are not I'm not tearing down the monuments of the red pill and pickup community. I'm not tearing them down. They are there. They are still there. They will always be there. Uh, I'm not looking to just blast them into obscurity. I'd like to feel that I'm adding to the glossary, not replacing it. Mm -hmm. I'm adding to it. I'm giving people uh, new words to use. I'm literally, I stop myself before, you know, just when I... I'm about to say, uh, she's not yours, it's just your turn. I stop myself right. from saying that. I stop myself from saying, you know, um, alpha mm, and beta, mm, you know what I mean? Right. I, I, I stop myself, and because I don't want to be part of the echo chamber. There's no growth in the echo chamber. Uh, like in uh, the exercise world, you have to cross train. Right, right. You know, you have yep. to do different exercises to build. And I think if we just keep using the same language over and over, nobody really grows. And it's not forsaking the past. I'm mm -hmm. not damning the past at right. all. Uh, I just think it's uh, a mature way. I don't want to perpetuate anyone's adolescence. It doesn't help anybody to uh, keep them at the adolescent stage of intergender relationships. Right. Okay. A man picks up a woman, ends up having a relationship, and then he thinks he can't fall in love with her because it's beta. Right, right. I can't hold yeah. her hand. I can't, I can't give her flowers because that's too beta. Yeah, because there's behavioral codes and practices ingrained in the ideology. Yes. And that's, you know, I, I talk about that. It's cultish. Yes. It's very cultish. Yeah. So, yeah. And things have changed. Things have changed. And I think it's a, um, any trailblazers in any discipline are going to be mocked at first. Come on. Yeah, yeah, let's, right. Yeah. Let's get real. Uh, you know, when I look at, uh, I don't want to say I'm comparing us to Tesla, but, you know, he was viewed as crazy. Now we're looking back and we're thinking, guy was a genius. Right. Guy was an absolute genius. And I think... History is going to prove that we are on to something. That the men's community can evolve, can change, can grow, can mature. Mm -hmm. And that there's room for everything and everybody. Right. We don't have to keep everybody in the playpen with a pacifier in their mouth. I don't want to babysit anybody. Well, it's a form of nursing. You yeah. know, whether you're suckling or I'm giving you a pacifier yeah. of slogans, you know, you're still suckling, you know, and men don't suckle, yeah. uh, um, you know, whether themselves and they don't demand that they yes. suckle, you know, and, yes. uh, you know, and what I find with a lot of the troll comments and stuff is that we're pulling the sucker or pacifier out of their their mouths and they want their ba. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. my daughter, you know, she had her ba and you had to sit down and say, no, we're going to start eating whole meals. You know, you're going to have to have to eat solids. And, mm -hmm. you know, and there's this kind of a transition phase. And I think we're really kind of on the early approaches of that. Yeah. As a lot of these ideas become so mainstream and yeah. we're carrying them forward, I think they're also receiving more feedback than mm -hmm. we ever had before because it's hard to get responses inside of an echo chamber or a small group of community where it hasn't been vetted through other means you don't have outside professionals now all of a sudden becoming aware of it and we're starting to see a lot more of that and it's it's removing themselves out of 
you know, essentially amateur and well-skilled amateur investigation or process into now, you know, where you're starting to become vastly more legitimate, where you have scientific observations, you have people that are coming back from family practices, you're having psychologists be involved. And I think that's going to influence us in a very positive way. Yeah. And, and also looking at people from a far more diverse background. Mm -hmm. I mean, you come from a men's grooming and styling back, background, and you're coming in initially to talk about this. But what I find is that the concepts and technical expertise you bring are actually a conduit for yeah. having an underlying conversation. Yes. It's showing one realm of ex yes. excellence in their lives. Yeah. And you manifest that, by the way. Yeah. And that's, that's the other added benefit of it is I'm not yeah. just teaching this, but I'm showcasing that. Well, I've, I've always said uh, when it comes to men's grooming, groom with a purpose. There's a purpose. There's a reason why you brush your hair a certain way, clean your skin a certain way. There's a reason why it's okay for a man to uh, take care of himself. The gruff, rough and tough, dusty, crusty guy uh, is a thing of the past. Uh, in, in the recent uh, past, any attempt to improve your look was mocked and called metrosexual which is another stupid term that mm -hmm. I hate. If a guy cares for his skin right. yep. and irons his own clothes or something like that, and they end up getting mocked. And what I've experienced is uh, uh, when I've interviewed women, what do you like about a man? What do you look at? Honestly, uh, many women have said, I look at a man's hands. She's, you know... Women will say, if they're gnarly and dirty, she goes, I don't want those hands touching me. Right. So things like, dudes, wash your hands. Keep a scrub brush at the sink. Right. Clean your nails. I said, uh, what else? One woman said, I look, at, I look at a man's shoes. I can size a man up in a few seconds by seeing his shoes. Are they all scuffed up? Uh, do they look good? Uh, do they complement what he's wearing? And I never thought of that. I just... You know, I'm very functional. Uh, Tanner Guzzi was the one who said to me, don't, what did he say? Don't sacrifice style on the altar of comfort. Because, you know, nobody loves wearing cargo shorts and Crocs more than me. Right, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean. Like, well, and the other thing is he says, I'm not anti, you know, I'll, I'll throw Crocs out there. He, yeah. pro he probably really is. But he says, do it with intent. Don't, yeah. you know, know your archetype, know your intent, yeah. know exactly why yeah. you're doing it, and, and make sure that's being communicated. Just don't just make an assembly because that was relatively within your right. ass in reach, you know, right. reach. So, yeah, it's been fantastic. So I think that has been um, caring for yourself is is not metrosexual. It's not being effeminate. It's it's pride. It's self-care. Right. And, and Jack Donovan in his, his talk where he talks about the way of men and he talks about the four tactical virtues, yes. you know, the, the, the tactical virtues of masculinity and one's honor. Yeah. You know, and when you clothe and you adorn yourself, yes. it's a form of honoring yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, not only your legacy, yourself, your yes. presence, your position, your profession, your family, your relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, and you when you start looking at it in that vein, it's really hard to make a sloppy decision, sit down and say, I'm going to dishonor myself, my family, and that's going to be my way of life. Yeah. And it's hard to also then sit down and say, I'm not doing this intentionally. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I'm sub sub communicating. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I love those ideas. I really love that thought, and I I really appreciate that both you and he have brought that to this convention and this organization, and are just stellar exemplars of each. So. You know, it's so funny. I was talking with Tanner last time, and he felt that we made a good pivot. He felt it. Mm -hmm. He wasn't getting weary or wary of the direction that we were going in, uh, he just felt that what he offers might not be as relevant. And then when he saw us, uh, when he saw how Patriarch took a turn, mm -hmm. uh, like a, a cruise ship takes a, you know, the, its turning arc is quite big. We, we've been slowly, slowly turning right, yeah. the ship around. And he was very, very pleased with the direction. And 
And I'm glad he communicated that with me because I was feeling it. Because when you feel something uh, that might be slightly controversial, one of your biggest fears is that you're going to, you feel that, number one, you're the only one that feels that right. way. Right, yeah, I was about to say it's the same. And number yeah, two, if a... you say something, you're going to get mocked. Right. And uh, so as he and I were talking, we said, yeah, yeah, we, we both, like, it was like, wow, you feel that way too? Me too. And uh, so that, that discussion happened, and more and more people have been commenting in that direction. Now, the dissenters are just old one way black and white thinking people i don't think we've i don't think i've gotten as many haters in my life on social media as i as i have gotten in the past 6 months with the pivot that we're taking and uh i think we're going in the right direction i think uh some of the the crises and the and the chaotic uh, ideological splits and nuclear fission that has happened has been a good thing. It's it's standing on a mountaintop and planting your flag and claiming your territory. I, I'm going to steal a phrase you actually gave uh, when we were off camera. We were switched roles. You were saying it was a, we're unfurling the sails. Yeah. We're you know we're resetting the sails. You know and you're adjusting our sails to catch the more appropriate wind to actually travel yes. better with more ease yes. and more efficiency and more power. Yes. And I really like that analogy. You know, it's, it's one thing to stick a flag, you know, but you're going to hold that territory, you know, and yeah. uh, it's never usually healthy. Uh, it comes at an extreme cost when you actually mm -hmm. hold a position. Yeah. Uh, but I do like the notion is that if we're talking about this as a movement, if we're going to be taking men on a life arc journey, you know, that, uh, you know, and in, in many ways, I think uh, we talk about the 21 convention giving the attendees the opportunity at a hero's journey. Yeah. Uh, this organization, I think, you're, we're witnessing it itself going through a hero's journey itself. Mm -hmm. And so there are going to be natural trials and tribulations of it. Mm -hmm. And I think right now we're seeing a resetting of the sales and unfurling of additional sales for, for, for our benefit. And I think it's yeah. going to be a tremendous asset. Yeah, when I look at some of the things that we have been unjustly accused of like oh it's misogyny weekend far from it anyone that, that, who... that didn't happen yeah i mean because i mean i i understand aj is right outside right now additionally <laughs> discounts on his woo program yeah you know, exactly 25 percent more yeah, woo I mean. right <laughs> you know uh it's it's not a how to get laid conference it's wife up the slut know. Yeah, I went. Yeah. Come on, who doesn't want to do that? Yeah, I mean, exactly. I know all the guys on Pornhub. That's precisely what you want to do. The girls yeah. in your favorite tab, you want to wife that up, yeah, right? Or exactly. your mini harem of girls. Exactly. You know. So yeah, I like. I like to think that we are capturing men at a at a young age. I'm trying to think who I was. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think who I was listening to recently on YouTube. What? what marketer it was. It might have been Grant Cardone. And he was, no, no, it was Gary Vaynerchuk. And he says, uh, and they were talking about the different platforms. And they were talking about TikTok. I don't know what TikTok I, is. I, I see it. Somebody else made a reference. I'm. I, there's so. I only have so much attention on certain things, and I'm. I'm, I'm going through a process of eliminating. I don't either. And the, and the demographic for TikTok is between nine and fourteen. Oh, that's going to be dangerous. Oh. Between, but what happens is Gary Vaynerchuk started advertising. He says, "I want to reach them at nine years old, so that by the time they're 18, 19, 18, 20 okay. years old." They know what my agency does, and he's doing it from a business perspective. Right, right. And uh, you know, there's a, there's a finite number of twenty year olds out there, but there's an infinite number of youth coming, coming up. Yep, yeah, they're and replaced every young. year. Right, and there's yeah. a spectrum. Um, the old model of the manosphere is a man passes through the manosphere, and then when he wants to settle down, he's no longer part of it. Right. Right, and that, that was the intent initially. Yeah. You know, you, you indulge yourself for this time period, yes. you do it, and the intent is you, you go through it. And somehow that's changed. I'd like to think that we have the man for his entire life. And it, it, wouldn't that be something? 
Yeah. Yeah, that you Every sit stage. down and say it's cross generational across your entire life arc. Yes. You know, this convention and the ideas being here are, are as relevant to a twenty yes. year old as they will be to somebody in their fifties. Yeah. Yeah. Like for instance, I mean, I'm not gonna be doing how to pick up women. That that will not be a talk or a seminar that I will ever do. Right. It maybe forty years ago, thirty years ago, I, I could have done that. Now it's all right, you've been married a few years, you have kids, maybe uh, you're approaching empty nest years. Not you. Your empty nest, your empty nest is <laughs> yeah, not going to happen for, for a, a little time. while. Yeah. Um, I'm saying that because, how old's your daughter? She's three and a half. She's three. three okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, yeah. Excellent. If, if so, that happened, that would, not, that would be a tragedy yeah. or something seriously yeah. went awry. But uh, I don't discount men of any age. And uh, there's always going to be men getting separated and divorced. Right. But the 55-year-old guy getting divorced is going to feel weird being in a room with 25-year-olds talking about pickup. Right. Always had. Yep. You know, there's a different, there's a whole different protocol for dating and meeting people Mm -hmm. um, at 55 than there is at 25. Correct. That's just the reality. So... I'd like to think that we are, what did Anthony call it? It's kind of like a, the Woodstock of, what did he call it? The Woodstock of the Manosphere. Yeah. Yeah. Where we just have, you know, a panoramic event for all men or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Panoramic event of mankind. Yeah, Yeah. literally, we have stage over here, stage over here, and they rotate out, and you have this pit, and everyone's talking and commuting. Yeah. And you're going for that. You have the camp out in the evenings, and, you know, it's just this whole event. Yeah. And and I think in a lot of ways, it's kind of modeled that, you know, that that you're you're going for the experience. Well, I I think it was interesting. uh, When I came on board, I had no idea that, you know, like, once or twice a week, I might fire up a pipe or a cigar. But I had no idea young people would even be remotely interested in that. Right. Even right. remotely. It just seems like such an old guy thing for me. And when I saw the interest, and Anthony said, do a group. And I thought, okay, well, and that, that was uh, last fall at your house. At back of my house. And yeah. I, honestly, yeah. I thought um, it was going to be maybe five or six guys. It ended up being about sixty guys. Yeah, it was three, three or deep. Yeah, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. rings of guys in and circles. And I just like. thought, wow. And then, it, and then the, uh, uh, and that just now it's almost become like a, an expectation, at patriarch. Hey, I got my pipe with me. Right. Yeah. And yeah. they were coming in. They had it. They were going. We're going to do this. And it, and it became one of those breakout moments of the events. You yeah. know. And and you, they're usually those things that occur. You know. And that, without a doubt, you had brought and delivered in that. that yeah. Way. And one guy called it uh, like our first night out on the on the that patio or that balcony there um, at the Patriarch event. They called it the uh, the 2019 Pipe Summit. Yes, I, yes. <laughs> that, I got a kick out of that. And it was just kind of cool yeah, seeing, yeah. Like, like, for instance, uh, Tex. He's a piper now. Right, right. Uh, he, the guy never smoked a pipe in his life. Now it's as if he's been puffing on a pipe for 50 years and, and people are asking him you know, about it. And, he, and he's incorporated it into his own relaxation program. Right. And I see his little pictures of a... You know, of like a bourbon and a pipe, you know what I mean? You know, on the beach and whatever. And uh, and I'm like, wow, this is this And is for cool. me, it's, and I see it because I, I look for these, and I, and I personally do it when I go visit spots. I look for a physical totem. A, you know, we call it a souvenir or whatever you yes. want. It. But in this particular case, it is, it is a utility item that uh, it allows me to have a takeaway. It allows me to remember. It allows me to physically put myself physically in mm-hmm. contact with that experience. Mm-hmm. I can go to it emotionally to it. But in this particular case, you're actually not only using it, but it's also showing a membership into a club. Yeah. Because I think had we approached these guys independent and say, hey, you want to try a pipe? There would have been very no interest. But yeah. the fact that they're all there together, they're doing all this, this is camaraderie, and you then have interest, and they realize that there's this whole community of men kind of taking an interest, there's this draw to that. Uh, and it's not necessarily the pipe smoke, but it's interesting. You're indulging in a product that's there for strictly your pleasure. Yeah, it was nice seeing men sit back and relax and not have to talk. Right. 
Enjoy each other's presence. Enjoy each other's presence, and there's not a lot of activities that men can do. Usually, um, men do things together. Right. They right. build things together. Mm -hmm. But men can pour a glass of scotch mm -hmm. to men, and the only thing you hear is the jingling of the glass, of the ice cubes in the glass, mm -hmm. and just take a sip every now and then and comment on something every now and then. And at the end of an hour or two, hey, we had a good time. Right. Yeah. Whereas, and this is not female bashing in any way, uh, I find that females would have to talk for two hours and not necessarily sit quietly and just enjoy each other's company. And, and the, what I find is that we're making room for that masculine presence. Yeah. You know, and I find that to be terribly intriguing because we're now having to be conscious about it rather yeah. than having it kind of be in a default state of what men do together. Yeah. So. It reminds me of when I, you know, I would take my kids fishing, sitting on the tailgate, I would back up to the creek, drop the tailgate down and sit on the back of the truck, throw a line in, and I'd have to just talk to my daughter. Just Dad, what's that? What kind of lure is that? What are we fishing for? What's for lunch? What time are we going to get home? Are we going to go to the movies tonight? Whereas with my sons, you know, we cast our bait out into the water and not say a thing mm -hmm. until maybe someone got a bite. Right. Hey, Dad, I got a bite. Literally 20 minutes of nothing, of just quiet. Hey, Dad, I think I got a bite. Okay, cool. And it was just peaceful. Yeah. Interesting. And I think uh, I think that's one of the beautiful things about men getting together is that uh, when we allow ourselves to be men with no expectations, just do what our biology dictates, not putting a lot of thought in it, not orchestrating anything, I think there is just a... Uh, like, honestly, that, that one night sitting around in a circle in your backyard there, just that kind of like round robin kind of like chat that we were doing and people were smoking cigars and pipes and stuff like that, that was profound to me. I just felt that was another level of fellowship in your backyard that we didn't have at, at the prior events. There right, was just, right. and there were... Like, as we were all talking, there would be like periods of just silence. But mm -hmm. no one felt the need, like, oh, it's too silent. I better make some noise or say something. Well, and it really was a breakout event for that convention. Yes. But the, the other component to it was you don't have men jockeying for a hierarchy of position. Yeah. There was, there was a stabilization of acceptance, yeah. of, of welcomeness, of safety. Yeah. You know, and so men were not doing that jockeying that you've seen in other you know, conditions or sporting events yes. or competition. Yes. And it was a way to, I think, take a tremendous amount of pressure off. And that the pipe thing kind of signified a lot of that. You know, yeah. and, and, in, and you teaching these guys or introducing these guys to the culture of piping. You know? yeah. And so I, I found that to be really awesome myself. So I, I appreciate that as well. Yeah. So and and what I like too is that that it's crossed over to become a token and a souvenir that people take home to recall those events and kind yeah. of go back to that space and time. And you know you hear that repeatedly. You know I know when for example I go visit Anthony for example, we'll go to the house and we'll discuss business and shop and everything else, and then we stop and we go and have a pipe. You know, and so that's How interesting yeah, it so, really yeah. is, and and so 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 it becomes that. And I also know that for a fact something else that that you've you brought in too with it is that it almost becomes a badge of membership. Is that it's becoming known for that? Mm -hmm. uh, is that you go to the twenty one convention and you you know either a piper or you're not, or people know who have yeah. done it. And then you know the interesting thing too is seeing the different styles not come out where people start finding their self expression of the pipe that they like. Yeah, and I would have never expected that to I occur never expected. at, at an I event mean, like this. We started out with corn cob pipes, and then uh, that wonderful company TobaccoPipes.com uh, has basically sponsored our pipe giveaways and so forth, and they really just have been very good to us. Let's let's thank them again. Tell, tell us the name of the company again, and how did they get involved in doing that? Because it, that's not a small amount of tobacco that they're sending over and supporting. And you sit down and say, you know, we had a convention of 250 guys. They had enough supply to go through. Yeah. Um, that was mm -hmm. terribly generous on their part. Yeah, I, I think, obviously, uh, when they came and visited um, the first time, uh, 
which was last October. Uh, I just I I just wrote to them and asked, and they were already followers of mine on YouTube because mm-hmm. uh, I have some of those. Uh, I think the some of my pipe videos are the the most viewed pipe videos in pipe YouTube history. Some of them have hundreds of thousands. Uh, over some of them have over a million views. Okay. Like, who would have thought? Right, yeah, right. You know, yeah. I mean, come on. So, obviously, I was on their radar. When I approached them, they're like, yeah, how many do you need? And, you know, and it was no brainer for them because what they're doing is providing pipe kits for people who never smoked a pipe before. Right. And in hopes that they're going to create a lifelong customer. And many people now order their pipes and tobaccos and all that stuff from tobaccopipes.com. Yeah, that's fantastic. So yeah. I love, I love hearing that. And yeah. they've done they've done wonders. And they literally helped make an event uh, terribly special for us. So I, I'm terribly appreciative of that. Yeah. So. Let's let's transition and segue. This is probably our last section. Let's talk about the future, uh, what's going to be taking place, uh, how you see things kind of wrapping up and going uh, towards the future as far as the direction. And I know that the next event will be in October yes. in Orlando, uh, very much a homecoming from Warsaw, Poland. Uh, I'm, I'm particularly looking forward to it. But I think there's going to be something terribly symbolic about that. I think that as much of Warsaw the presence and context and history of Warsaw and Poland has reflected in this convention about a resurgence and resurrection and rebuilding uh, and holding to core values. I think there's going to be something about a homecoming in October with regards to that. What's your take on it? How how do you see things going? Well, think about it. Uh, July is almost over. Right. We have August, September, October. Like, wow, three months from now is another convention right which is going to be huge yes it possibly I think 2020 is going to be our largest one to date yes but yes. the end of 2019 is going to be pretty pretty big as well and I think with the diversity of speakers and thought I honestly believe that we're attracting uh, a different demographic now mm-hmm. and Pretty much the, um, uh, I believe that the, uh, the inclusion of fathers, the inclusion of an older attendee, not just the 21 to 27 year old pickup artist I think the inclusion I think we made the parameters wider and more and more people are gonna feel like that they can attend you right. and I, I think also the transmission barrier between you know the point of entry <clears throat> excuse me is different yes I think it's vastly more porous now because it's more welcoming, it's more inclusive. It is. Where I think that there previously we were too ideologically bent and there's an impression that it was going to be a harsher environment, and particularly with how uh, some people projected a learning environment should be a harsh and rigid and stern yeah. uh, uh, response. And I think that the, a lot of that's changing uh, yeah. for the better. And I think that that will play out as well. I know we've I've had a number of people who said, hey, we've kind of followed it wasn't sure and one of the reasons why we're coming here was because of the events that have occurred mm-hmm. uh, and they go we i decided to take a ch- take a gamble and kind of take a chance this was going to be it and th- i think it'll be very different than what we've seen before and I'm, I'm particularly very intrigued by it yeah i think the um i got into a thing the other day with somebody i love it when um trolls talk about you know people are in it for the money and I, I, I made a comment with somebody. I said, hey, how about those big checks that Anthony writes for us at the end of every event? Yeah, right. You know, like, oh, Bruno's doing it just for the money. And I, I said, dude, I go, do you realize there's no one who's getting paid? We're doing this out of love for mankind, care, for care, uh, like love, care, and concern for a generation 
of men who need this kind of information. Many of us make a lot of sacrifices. I took a week off from work. I'm not earning anything right now. I took a week off to be here. Yeah. And like I said, when I leave on Wednesday, it's not like Anthony's going to write me a check for 5000 and say, hey, thanks for showing up. Right, right, here's right, right. Your, here's compensation your for your time and Absolutely. Yeah, input, yeah, value. I'm happy to give up myself. Right. And every single person here is giving of themselves. Yes. And that's the beautiful thing. Yeah, like I, I had to square away two weeks of time from yeah. my profession. I've never been in a position to do that before. Yeah. And it, it was a fight. I will sit down and say, having made the mistake of committing to all three conventions yeah. prior to realizing the time one, yeah. I'm, I'm sacrificing more than 80% of my vacation time. Yeah. You know, and that doesn't include nights and weekends and everything else. So, you know, the, the fact that somebody's saying we're doing it for the cash, you know, or, you know, I've heard recently these shares. Uh, I understand that two partners have left the firm and now there's like shares to be had. Like what? We're more? squabbling over that. That's crazy. I know. It's, 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 just, it's laughable. It's, it's total fiction. <laughs> it's fiction. What I did was I doubled up my clients before I came and... When I get back to the states, I doubled up, and I'm just I'm going to be really busy hitting the ground running. Right, right. Yeah. Because I made time to be here. So okay. yeah, but I I love it when you love what you do, you make time and make room for it. So I think the future of this organization is going to be incredible. It, I, I do too, and it, we, we I, it's always interesting seeing people make a personal change. You know, you see it in their eyes. You know, yeah. you see it in how they move, or you know, the changes that yes. take place internally within a convention. And, and oddly enough, we actually had somebody that was not part of this convention, but another one that was within the, kind of the European area, and he made the trip out here just to swing by and I say hi. About, and yeah. you just sit down and yeah. go, "How fantastic is that? Yeah. He's making an enormous life change in a, in a completely yeah. different direction." And, yes. and he goes, you know, I, I was kind of lost before, and I'm doing this, and you know, and he and he had a, a desire to share that, and yeah. I'm so glad he did. Yeah. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing how he how he does his new career venture and those experiences, and I know he's going to have a hell of a time. So it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. And it's interesting watching the speakers um, evolve. Isn't that a fascinating one? I mean, yeah. Alexander, when he gave his speech, called the Ascended Man. And I said to him, I go, dude, you know, that's a book. That's going to be a book. And he goes, I think it is, too. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and it, I mean, it's titled perfectly. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. And and he's in the middle of reinventing himself, too. Yes. Because yeah. he's the fitness guy. Right, right. And all of a sudden now he's talking about honor and virtue. Right. And manhood and, like... He made a pivot too. Yeah, and and he's always he's always been one of those fascinating individuals that has had a long sight view on things, and you listen to it and it's like God, he gets this and has a turn of a phrase that's educated, it's sharp, it's yeah. witty, uh, and it's grounded in common sense. And you're like, man, this his, is a guy to his listen voice to. is important. It is, it really is, it really is, it really is. So yeah. You know, I, I like to sit down and say it's the hair, but it really isn't. You know, and, and he says things like, you know, um, uh, I, I make it easy on myself. I, yeah. I, I act like a man and women respond, you know, accordingly. Yeah. You know, yeah. he does a lot more than just that. Yeah. He, he acts like a well-rounded, masterful man. Yes, he does. And he reaps beautiful rewards because he's, of it. And, he's at and, a great point where he can talk to 18, 19, 20-year-old men, relate to them. And then I'm twice his age. And he... Ta he He's right at such a sweet spot in his life right now. He's going to go nowhere but up. Yeah, I, I hate to say it. I'm going to give him a bad time. I think he taught my daughter how to flip hair. Her hair was getting longer, and he just kind of at one point just did it. Did You know, he did, naturally got it out, yes. and, and she mimicked it. And oh, I'm, I And you sit down and laugh. And that's so funny. she kind of does, and I go, yeah, she's doing the AJ, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so, oh, that's, so, but, that's hilarious. But, but it's, it's, seen, it's also kind of interesting how well he's able to integrate from children to adults, cross-sex, yeah. you know, everybody. Yeah. You know, I saw him talk to an old woman down in the restaurant, you know, a local native, and you just see the care and consideration and the connection. It's real, it's vibrant, and it's it's fantastic to see. I don't want to blow his cover, but I probably will right now. But um, I said, uh, like, I guess he's been with his girl for over a year now, and he, he said something. Some guys were talking about how beta it is to buy flowers for your woman, and he says, wait a minute. I, I buy flowers for my girlfriend once a week. I must, yes. I must be a beta yep. or something. There must be something wrong with me. And, uh, you know, and he, obviously he's really good with, with the um, kind of like the, that double entendre like that. And uh, I said, uh, 
do you think she'll be showing up in October? And he goes, I think so. Yeah. So yeah. I'm kind of excited, you know, to to see her supporting him. Yes, yes. And be by his side. I think that's neat. And, and something else I think is interesting, too, is the number of couples we consistently see coming in. It's not like there's an, an, you know, a nomination of just one person or two. Yeah. That there's consistently a number of partners coming in, enjoying the convention, enjoying the attendees, yes. seeing the events, being part of it. So, you know, I think that speaks volume when you have a presenter being able to be overt and open and yes. transparent. This is who I am. Yes. This is what I write about. This is what I communicate about. It. My wife and children and my family family fully know about it you know no one's coming out of a closet anymore right, you know and right. that you know that sort of CD element uh, and so I think that's you know really fascinating but you know going back to the flower things you know thank God we're doing it in a nation that's so beta I mean did yeah. you not see the flower market yeah. you can hardly turn a corner in yeah. some of these areas and not see flower displays yeah. you know you don't have to go to a flower shop to get flowers right. here it's an expression right. of affection yes. uh, you know and tokens and how much more enriched are you? I know every time you see it, you just are. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I think it's fantastic. That's I cool. really do. George, I think we're gonna have to wrap this one yep. up. I, you know, I, it's, I, it's a chagrin that these conversations have to come to an end. So, yeah. uh, George Bruno, where can they find you online? How they can get a better hold of you? What would be the best way? Best way is georgebruno.com. I have a newsletter, you can sign up for that. That's gonna be starting up real soon. And that's gonna be basically, um, my version of what works, what doesn't, and why. My wisdom over the years, things that have worked for me, things that haven't worked as far as uh, relationships, business, uh, writing, on-camera skills, speaking, the things that are my uh, sweet spots, uh, grooming and so forth. So it'll be kind of like a gem of a newsletter and something that, you know, it'll, it'll be something for everybody. I almost want to tell you right now, make that a book. I mean, you just put in that in a context of alone uh, that that is worthy of an outstanding read, and I look forward to it. Yeah, so, great. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure once again. Thank you. I'm Socrates. That's been this issue, guest issue of the 21 Report. Next time you'll be seeing a more familiar face, a more competent uh, host and interviewer. Uh, it has been a pleasure, and have a, have a good evening. What was your experience so far with the 21 convention? Oh, outstanding, outstanding. Professional, all across the board. Really good energy with a lot of people, and uh, I just like it because it's a very positive, uh, positive direction. This, uh, George, this, is a, this has been a first class event. It's fantastic, you guys are in a really tight ship. I've been to a lot of conventions over the course of my business career, and I can tell when things are well run and when things aren't, and this is a very well run operation. I was very impressed. It's pretty incredible to see where Anthony's brought it especially from last year, which is my first year here, and to see the, the upgrades he's made, it's been incredible. I've got my notebook, and with every speaker, I've written down about two or three lines mm -hmm. under each of the speakers of just just the key prime stuff that I got. That's good, that's good. Great. It's, it's very surreal, man. I'm, I'm yeah. really enjoying it. I'm happy to live in such an era where such a thing like this is possible. I have never seen a group of guys like this, a group of 200 men who are focused, squared away, and working on their values, just never met a bigger group of wonderful guys. It's kind of neat because I've been to a fair amount of conventions in my day, but you never see one where the guys like, uh, here you can just see Ed Lattimore talking to Tanner about boxing. Yeah. You sit down and then you tell your boxing experiences, everybody's kind of pinging off each other. It's yeah. nice. It has been fantastic and it's been four days of guys all on the same page, working in the same direction. Fascinating meeting some of the people, hearing their stories. you got, you got people traveling from other parts of the world to come here just to see yeah. some of the speakers. That's yeah. amazing. That's the thing that's impressed me is everybody here is very serious. Yeah. They're taking it you know, close to their heart. What a great convention. Thanks, George.